If you have a cheap source of feed, then raising animals for meat might be a better choice for you than selling your young stock early, like I suggested in a different video. I've never actually sold any of the animals that I've raised for meat. Even my rabbits were sold as breeding stock, but I've purchased meat from several homesteaders. The way I learned to butcher uh, was by purchasing a lamb from one of my neighbors and the the man I bought it from did the killing while I was watching so I could see how to do it and then we took it home and with my husband's help then I was able to get it hung and skinned and gutted and then cut and wrapped mostly by myself <laughs> so um, I even saved the hide and I didn't do a very good job at tanning the skin the, the hide side was really tough and not very pliable but it still made a good rug to put on the side of the bed and so that's what I used it for. Um, I talked about selling goat kids and lamb kids in a previous video and if you have pasture or somewhere good that you a cheap source of feed for those animals and also if you can look at those animals as food you could probably get more money for them at a at a older age after they had had a little chance to grow. Um, when I was raising goats then there was a man who would drive up from Las Vegas on Saturdays usually about one Saturday a month during the spring and the summer and he would buy up any kind of young livestock that you had for pretty about forty dollars for a weaned kid was about the price he was paying and because he was doing that, then I could kind of price my goats accordingly. I knew that if I got $40 from a butt kid that was within the first week and not even weaned, then I was getting a good price for my animals. But if I was stuck with a lot of animals that I wanted to get rid of, that would have been a really good way to turn those animals into cash. It was a lot easier than the auction. The man would come right to people's houses and pick them up. And so it was convenient. And that way then they were selling meat to the meat market. They weren't necessarily getting a very good price. Um, I've also par purchased um, pork cut and wrapped from, uh, from the butcher that we used. And he would give me a call when his pigs were getting close to butcher time and then I'd get my money together so that I could buy them. And I never did go look at them or pick out a certain pig that I wanted, but I could have. And knowing that I could have made me feel better about the whole thing. Um, because he was a butcher, then I'm assuming that what those pigs were being fed was the, the waste products of butchering. The things that people in this country usually just throw away, like the guts and the skin and other things. So, um, that was one of his cheap sources of feed. Uh, there's also spent brewery grain. I've heard of people fattening their pigs on. And what my personal pigs that we put in our freezer, what we fed them was whey, weeds from the garden, vegetables that had gotten bad or, or just grown too big, um, trimmings off of vegetables, leftovers from dinner, that kind of stuff. Pigs will eat almost anything. I, I fed them what was left over from butchering chickens several times as well and they di didn't even seem to mind the feathers. I've also put, purchased beef that was cut and wrapped and in that case then once in a while I did go look at the animal. We lived in rangeland where there were, were lots of ranches and a lot of times our neighbors would have cows for sale that were young that just didn't breed up during breeding season and so they were being culled from their herd. These were animals that the input the, the rancher had put into them was mainly um, the time and also giving them water. They lived mainly on range out in the desert the thing that all the people that I bought from had in common was a cheap source of feed. So if you have that or if you can find that in your area, selling meat might be the thing for you. 
I've had salesmen drive up to my house in refrigerated trucks and, and show me meat that was vacuum sealed in little packages and the price per pound of that meat was just outrageous and I never bought any of it. It looked great but I just never bought any of it because it was too expensive and I also already had a freezer full of meat. But that somebody's buying it and that <laughs> that might be something that you could look into. My favorite book, one of my favorite books is Gaining Ground by Forrest Pritchard and I didn't mean for this video to turn into a book review but if you're interested in selling meat that might be a good book for you to read. He talks about how he sold vacuum sealed meat at farmers markets and saved his family farm from from being foreclosed and so that is is one <laughs> the presentation of the meat makes all the difference on the price in that instance not only that but his was all grass-fed beef or pork and organic and yeah and it, I'm sure it was bringing like fifteen dollars or more a pound at the farmers markets um, and so game birds and chickens and waterfowl are probably also things that would be economical to raise especially geese and turkeys can live almost completely on pasture um, my experience with quail I raised Coturnix quail and their game birds but they were very very fast growing they the hens would be laying eggs at six weeks old but they also went through a ton of feed. They started out just as little tiny chicks at the size of a bumblebee and then by the time we butchered them about six or seven weeks old then they were about this big. <laughs> they were about a fist. Anyway they had grown exponentially in that short time but they did require a lot of commercial feed and homesteads are all about balance sometimes it's better to have animals that grow slower and take less of a cash input just because they're they end up being more economical for the homestead in the long run and but I mean it's up to you if you find a, a cheap for, a source of co even commercial feed then it can be an option to to raise some of these things that need to have uh, a large amount of commercial feed and I know that if you buy in bulk, it does make a difference on the price. I've bought bulk chicken food before, and I know that I saved a lot of money by doing that. Anyway, if you have found any of this information helpful, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Mm -hmm.